called my morning oh spoke to me so um yeah my name is john fagan i'm founder of simple city and i'll welcome you all to um yeah as i said we're going to try and keep it within the hour but that depends on questions at the end some of you may happen to drop off within that so I might even, can you hear that ding donging no okay cool just me sweet no worries um when someone enters anyway so this is going to be our seventh uh, uh year we've been running uh sync the city over the time we've had 75 teams competing so that's over 1000 people um and actually a handful of real businesses that have been created from this process Obviously, we had to cancel a single city last year, so we're super excited to be bringing it to, to you in 2021. I'm going to just sort of give you a brief intro and welcome you all. Then I'm going to be handing over to Martin Blackwell of uh, Bid, Nor Norwich Bid. And then we also have some European partners here today. So you're going to be hearing from Heng and Gerko. Brau, maybe? I don't know if that's right, uh, Gerko. And um, then also Philippa Roberts from Bennett UK may say a few words. And then after we've got an overview of the broader initiative of the upcycling here, what we're trying to do in the area, you're going to be hearing from Hayley Johnson, who's going to talk us through the Sink the City process. And then Tom Wood is on hand, who will wave his, wave, wave his arm there as well. He's keeping an eye on the chat, uh, may help answering some of the questions uh, via chat or also uh, via video. But yes, yeah, so you feel free to ask questions throughout the, the talks on, on the chat, but we do have a Q&A at the end where you can actually come online and ask your question face to face. So I'm just gonna fire up the old slides here um, and get started. So for some of you who are not familiar with Sync City, I'll just give you a little bit of brief overview of that. Um, we always use this kind of analogy for it. Um, it's the, the, the event is very similar to The Apprentice. I'm not sure if you're familiar with The Apprentice, but it's this very popular program on BBC uh, run by Alan Sugar. And you have all these, you know, that's 15 people come together and they often split into teams and every week they are sent challenges. They're mainly business challenges, but they can be anything from creating a product to solving a problem to finding things, rebranding, building an app, all kinds of things are solved. And then they, they, they are measured in their success in terms of the outcomes of that. So, and it's often over a two, three day period of every challenge. So this is pretty, very similar to what Sink the City is. And then as well as that, it's very similar to Dragon STEM because at the end of Sink the City event, really what you're trying to prepare for prepare for, and hey, you'll talk more about that later, is this pitch, where you've got to do a, a pitch to a panel of judges, and you have the opportunity to, on Dragon's End, you win a cash investment, but uh, with, with us, you'll actually win cash, so there's no investment, you proof. there's up, up to £4,000 worth of cash prizes available, £3,000 for the winner, £1,000 for the runner, and you can do that with whatever you want. You can spend it on beer down the pub, give it to charity, we don't care. Um, and also, I chose this screenshot because that's Wayne Taylor there, a local guy uh, who, who I actually work with right now, actually pitching at Dragon's Den, and he won an investor. Uh, all the Dragons were trying to get hold of him, and Deborah Mead and invested him. So what is the challenge? Norwich Bid. So Martin Blackwell, who you hear about, he approached me towards the end of the last year and gave me an overview of a project they've been uh, involved in, which you'll hear about. Um, and it is this challenge, really, the target uh, is auditing a whole bunch of Norwich companies and attempting to get 20% of them to up upcycle their waste. Um, so you'll hear more about that, I won't go into too much detail. But yes, we accepted the challenge. I spoke to the team. Uh, um, at UEA because we are, you know we work closely with the UEA, Julie and they they accepted the challenge together, so we worked together on that to make it happen. Um, but we have had like throughout the, the the seven years, six years we've been running the events. You know, people come along to the event and pitch an idea themselves. So this is the first time we're doing a themed event. Normally, anyone can pitch any idea, but we often do get 
sort of environmental based pitches, problems or anything in sustainability, it's quite common. Um, at, in fact, our 2018 winner uh, was more on the recycling, not upcycling. Sorty app, they did a pitch and won the event, had a really good idea, concept to help people to work out what can be recycled and what cannot. And Look East picked that up within, you know, they even got uh, Taylor Terry to talk about it on Look East. So um, we have had that. And also in the past, we've actually had a proper upcycling uh, they didn't win it, but Strand was a business idea in recycling human hair um, to create uh, fabrics from it. So, yes, we've had similar themes, so we're really excited to have this really focused theme on upcycling. So people who are familiar with Sink the City, it's broadly the same format, but it's slightly different. Hey, you'll go into that into a bit more detail. Um, as you know, we're not, you know, normally team formation happens at the event, we'll be doing the team formation uh, before that. And there's going to be a lot more focus on the business ideas and models, the market research and the operational models, which Philip may mention about. Um, but it's all the same spirit of Sink the City. Um, and why would you want to do this? Why do you want to spend two days uh, on a Saturday, Sunday in a tent with a bunch of strangers? Well, it is really fun event. Um, you will, you, and you really feel like you're making a difference with this. There's always this amazing feel good factor that comes away after, you know, uh, achieving what you achieve over these two days. Key thing is you're gonna learn a lot. Even if you're an expert in a particular area, I mean, our mentors, expert mentors, which you'll hear about later, they're meant to be the experts, but exports, experts, um, but they uh, learn a lot as well, as well as individuals. So it's really like a crash course in, you know, building a business, like one year of learning is condensed into two days. Um, and you'll meet new friends, new potential future colleagues, you never know. And it might even inspire you to get into uh, upcycling, sustainability or build your own business. So really highly recommend to get involved because it is totally awesome so um cannot be possible without partners and our sponsors as i mentioned uva has been a partner from the beginning so the seventh year we couldn't we couldn't do it without uva julie schofield and her team we've got uh, langham again for the second year contributing uh supporting the event and then the 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 the, the you know norwich bid of really martin blackwell you know i met him a few months ago he is a man that really gets things done he's highly motivated to make this happen really appreciate you know not only putting effort into it but money behind it and then obviously this whole thing is related to this fund this european fund and the upcycling your waste project so really pleased to have these guys involved so i'm going to hand over to you martin and uh give us a lowdown on uh the whole initiative. Thank you. So a uh, couple of quick uh, clicks, please, uh, John. Uh, the, the Business Improvement District, if you don't uh, know us, we are a not-for-profit in this city. We represent about 750 businesses. Uh, each of those businesses pays uh, a levy of an extra 1% on their business rates, and that but gives us our funding. So there are three bits on this this slide please John. So what we do is promoting the city, the Norwich experience and a voice for business. So the promoting bit is we run Visit Norwich, the experience bit, you see there's the hosts there, we've been putting up murals around the city, we run the Christmas lights, those types of things. And then under a, a, the, the voice for business, it's the free Wi-Fi and uh, of course upside for your waste. Moving on. Um, we are really keen to see these ideas turn into action and so yes there's project funding that john's already mentioned but through our, our network of businesses if a really good idea comes out of this then we'll have, try and help you find office space a, you know maybe a, you know a desk to to start your business or, or even retail space if you end up producing a, a, a project a product Alongside that, through our network, we might be able to help you with advice on marketing, legal, accountancy, mentoring. So our board of directors are, are really up for this. And uh, there are some big hitters in the city who will 
you know, put time and effort behind this. So my final slide is um, just for what we're really trying to do here. So we're going to, we are going to pilot something next year. So in the autumn, we'll be going out to tender to find uh, ways in which we can join up what's essentially buyers and sellers uh, in a way. Um, I don't know which is which. The sellers, I guess, are the, what we've, the audits we've done in 257 businesses looking at their waste streams. Um, and then the buyers might be, although buyer is probably the wrong word, you may not actually may pay for it, are those waste streams that we're going to look at in some, some detail. So we want to get as many businesses as possible participating in it. Um, and so putting these two ends of the spectrum in, uh, in contact with each other. In the office, we're likely calling this Tinder for waste because we want to put in touch those people who've got a waste stream and those people who can use it to upcycle it. And by upcycle, I'd like now like to introduce you to Herco Brauer from uh, The Hague, who's our lead partner who's going to talk you through exactly what we mean by upcycling, et cetera. Over to you, Verho. Thank you very much, Martin. Don't be mistaken by my initials, KGB. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not from the Russian Secret Service. They are called FSB now. So <laughs> um, yes, we are the, the, the main partner or uh, the lead partner, I must say, in this project, and I'm very happy that Nordsbit is participating. A uh, very welcome partner, I might add. Um, what is the idea behind upcycling? Well, normally everybody knows recycling, but upcycling is something of which we understand in this context means transforming wasted materials, parts, or, or materials in, uh, into secondary resources as a product uh, with at least equal and preferably better technical, economically or social quality than it had before without burdening people in the environment with hazardous and harmful substances or processes and therefore add uh, additional value uh, to the product, to the materials, to the wasted materials and um, avoid use of virgin materials. That's the idea. And Martin already got into some details with regards to the, to the objective for Norwich. Um, this is the objective for Norwich. We have six pilot areas that are involved in this, uh, in this project, uh, meaning uh, a business area in the city of The Hague. Yes, thank you very much. Um, uh, a pilot area in Eimond. Um, the city of Ostend in Belgium, uh, Roubaix in uh, northern France, the region of Kent, and of course Norwich BID. And together with these uh, uh, partners, we have two knowledge partners being um, Fives University of Applied Sciences and the TU Delft, a university uh, with my colleague Jan Henk Weiling, who is a specialist in, in upcycling and reusing of waste. What can I say more? Do you have a, yeah, oh, that's a nice one. These, these are the activities we are um, uh, doing in this project. Uh, so first we um, go into a discussion with the, the, the businesses and analyze their barriers and their drivers to know what thrives them or what hinders them in upcycling their waste. And one of the main barriers is the, the regulation on waste. And that's why we are also informing them, making an inventory of these waste of their, of their uh, regulations and informing them about that. So we're gonna make a report about that. Then we're going to do an inventory on the waste streams that these companies have uh, in order to combine them and find out what, what we can do as a collective and which kind of business cases we can calculate based on the amount of waste and the quality of the waste streams. Uh, together with that, we are also organizing a meet the market and what, market, what Martin is doing at the moment to, to uh, make contact between the supply and the demand side and what the market is able to do with these waste streams. Um, 
together uh, with that, we are organizing the circular procure procurement. So we're collecting all the waste streams. We are making upcycle criteria to get as high uh, upcycling as possible with the lowest price, preferably. And then we're going to tender it um, and select the, the most suited uh, upcyclers. Uh, capacity building is an activity based on increasing the knowledge of companies on circular economy, on circular business cases, on waste legislation, on how to handle their waste streams internally, but also analyzing this and how can you reduce your waste uh, streams in order to uh, be as efficient as possible. So increasing your resource efficiency. Um, well, in the second half or uh, starting from January, we want to implement the new upcycle cases uh, in, in the different pilot areas. And we want to provide uh, future initiatives, uh, being BIDs, being municipalities, or being a consortium of, of companies to help them um, Getting their, finding their way in upcycling and accelerating circular business cases. So adopting what we did, learn from what we experienced and using that and making that available for other initiatives. Yes. Well, this is the one that's not particularly familiar with me, but I can I know what it means, or is this one of your slides, Jan Henk? No, it's uh, yours, uh, Hego. It's mine, right. Okay, so normally you have an offer of um, waste uh, that is being brought on the market. Every company needs to have their own waste contract and a waste processor. And then the waste processor is selecting uh, a, a way of recycling perhaps, or a burning or uh, dumping it on a, on, a, on a landfill, whatever it is whatever is most suitable for him and not suitable for the waste owner. So the waste owner has no insight in whatever is behind the chain after collecting the waste streams. And that is what we want to change. We don't want to get in touch with the waste stream, with the, with the waste a collector and the, the logistic company, but we want to do business with the recycler. So know what our waste becomes. What is the new product that will be made from the waste streams that are still valuable? And this is the way the insight will be created in order to, um, to have an, an, an upcycling business cases. So this will probably result in a separate, could result in a separate service agreement for logistical services, and then being brought to recyclers who will then uh, recycle or upcycle specific waste streams because they are they use that stream as a resource. Uh, in that way, we avoid burning waste, landfilling waste, and and losing valuable uh, virgin uh, or um, losing valuable materials. Um, so this is the main uh, approach of this project, and Jan Henk. We already started and all the pilot areas started with doing the in interviews on barriers and drivers and on the waste stands. And I think, Janek, you have uh, some information on that. Yes, uh, thank you, Gerko. So um, uh, I'm now going to present the interviews uh, made in uh, Norwich. Uh, uh, most of them the uh, second half last year and uh, uh, up to uh, this month. Um, about uh, 200 and, uh, uh, 257 uh, companies were interviewed. Uh, who were they? Uh, a large amount, uh, a little bit more over 100 were micro companies, so companies uh, with less than uh, 10 uh, full-time employees. Uh, 29 uh, small companies, so that's uh, between 10 and, and uh, under 50. Uh, seven mediums, uh, between 50 and 250, and uh, three large ones, but also a lot of people were interviewed and they didn't, didn't know uh, how many people worked in their business. So uh, also 63 were uh, filled in as unknown. And we will see that in, uh, in interviews that uh, a lot of stuff uh, was not really always uh, known by the, by the people who were interviewed, uh, which were, by the way, management and, and, and people um, 
higher in the top of the higher in the hierarchy, hierarchy of, uh, of the company. So how much did we find? Uh, this is um, uh, a graph of a little bit, a uh, large graph of, uh, uh, sorry, table of what we found. So of course, residual waste, general waste uh, is about one and a half uh, thousand tons. So, um, and then we all, the second one is almost a thousand tons of mixed material for recycling, which is usually your plastics and paper, <coughs> excuse me, that is being uh, um, separated uh, afterwards. And the third, first type of mono waste is, is, uh, is uh, food waste over half a thousand tons uh, per year. Uh, metals, of course, not surprising, and uh, also a lot of wood is being collected. Um, going to the other side of this, uh, this table, we also see stuff like coffee, and I think that's meant coffee, coffee grounds, of course, coffee is not a waste. Uh, but we'll, we'll see that also lots of materials we will see here is also not a waste. Um, there's also um, six, and a half th uh, six and a half tons per year of cooking oil. And you think like, hmm, yeah, that's the stuff you should not uh, throw down the, um, the drain because it will clog your, your sewage system. But the cooking oil is an interesting uh, uh, and renewable uh, um, uh, feedstock for uh, making biodiesel. So um, quite interesting stuff there we found. Also printing plates and, and printing chemistry, interesting materials there. Uh, we also found, um, um, uh, indeed also what I see here is, is uh, WEEE, uh, uh, also that's an input for, uh, for, uh, for recycling. So uh, interesting stuff we found it's now at this moment being separately collected for all kinds of different types of, of processing. So next slide please. Yeah. Also, we found uh, that people were, um, uh, were also separately collecting uh, products. Of course, uh, not a big surprise, uh, a lot of pellets in this area. And I'd like to point out that uh, we, uh, uh, in the Norwich, uh, 257 people were interviewed, and um, um, which is about 10% uh, of, of the, the, the businesses in, in Norwich. So we're just scratching the surface here. And we already see there's more over 6,000 uh, pellets. And pellets are now being uh, uh, traded. So these are, I'm not sure if these are Euro pellets. They're, they're always, everybody knows they're valuable. But also nowadays we have so-called one-way pellets. And uh, they are being um, put into service as, as dischargeable pellets. But there's also a trade in that. Um, also other stuff we found, uh, fun stuff, books and light bulbs. Books is my, 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 my charm. Um, so. A lot of products also being separately collected. So next slide, please. So we also asked the people, what could you, if, if the, there are possibilities, what could you separately collect from the residual bin? So stuff that goes into the residual waste. And we had about uh, way over 300 answers on this. Um, and uh, 50 plus different types of materials were mentioned. But the interesting thing is here, is that businesses, if you just interview them and ask them, they don't know always know what, what is what is recyclable or reusable. So yeah, next slide, please. So we had a huge list of what's being mentioned. So we see here uh, in the graph on, on, the, um, on the left side, and the material and products. Um, and on the other side, the times mentioned. And of course, food waste was mentioned many times, so not very surprising. Also cardboard, your plastics, etc. But also nowadays, people know that coffee grounds are being used as a feedstock to grow mushrooms and other, other things. So that's also being mentioned because people know it can be, it can be used. Uh, coffee cups, everybody's talking about coffee cups. People are probably, I think, um, slightly fed up with that it gives a lot of waste. But if you go down this, li this, this, this list, and I, I had to split it up in two, and um, uh, we see uh, also on the other side, for example, on, on top, milk cartons is being mentioned, uh, tins, tires, air filters, carpet, etc. So people see a lot of stuff that goes into the bin. They're, they're asking themselves, hmm, could this be, could this be uh, recyclable or could it be reused? So uh, there are a lot of uh, possibilities here, here where we think. So next slide, please. So there's also another question, and it was a little bit uh, surprising, I think, for a lot of, uh, lot of people that were interviewed. Uh, the question was, do we also have materials or products that are already in the waste you separated? So that's a bit of an odd question because people think, like, hey, I already separated the waste for recycling and stuff. 
And now you're asking me if there's even more stuff that, that is interesting in that in that material uh, in that waste. Again, we had uh, over 500 answers, so people were interested in, in trying to answer this question. Um, and over more than 40 uh, uh, different types of uh, materials were mentioned. And we, we can see from the answers that people were slightly um, yeah, surprised, maybe got off guard here. Uh, but they did their best. Uh, um, cardboard was mentioned many times, uh, but also, uh, of course, paper and plastic. So. But if you go down the list, and also very long list, but you see also a lot of different uh, types of possibilities. So people said, listen, uh, cooking oil was mentioned again, wood offcuts, can we do something with that? Coffee grounds uh, for growing mushrooms and many other applications. Uh, shredded confidential uh, stuff. You go to the other side of this, uh, this table, we also see uh, motor oil, timber, wet food waste, uh, wood, sawdust, uh, light bulbs, etc., plastic sacks, polystyrene. So, a lot of materials were mentioned. And I think that's quite interesting because if you see uh, a different, um, a different materials being mentioned uh, by people that, that already go, go into the, the recyclable uh, 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 fraction, like, sorry, one, one slide back, back please. Uh, that's, that can be quite, uh, that, that gives a lot of, uh, I think, a lot of potential here. So, for example, if you look at sawdust, that's somewhere on the on the right side, somewhere in the middle, uh, mentioned only twice. But sawdust is actually uh, a resource uh, being used uh, for for uh, uh, lay material for poultry and also for other cattle. Um, uh, polystyrene blocks and polystyrene is also a plastic that's being recycled. And if it's being mixed with other plastics, it, the mixture gives um, actually garbage. You can't really use it. So you have to really have to separate these things. Um, also, textiles is being mentioned, of course, as a big trade in that, but also textiles is being uh, put in back into fiber to make underlay carpet. So, a lot of uh, possibilities here we see uh, when people mention these things. The next slide, please. So, um, wasted products here. So, a lot of uh, products that I mentioned, uh, but what we also see in England, but also in the Netherlands, is that for example, uh, people mention that you know you can recycle cardboard and you can separately collect cardboard, but not many people know that if they have the different the same type of box, that they can uh, they actually can also trade in the box. Uh, so if if a company or business uh, receives a hundred uh, uh, package uh, boxes for their packaging per week, and if they can uh, um, put it uh, in. Uh, to store that, that actually those those things are worth uh, way more money than, than just you know recycled cardboard. And same with plastics. Uh, in the Netherlands, we also saw companies that uh, were uh, neatly separating their, their plastics, but they also put away the jerry cans in the recycling bin for, for plastics. But these jerry cans uh, were also um, uh, as product uh, worth uh, way more than than just uh, plastics. More examples is that we see that coffee grounds go into the organic bin, which is great. We can make fantastic compost uh, from that. But coffee grounds are being used not only for to grow mushrooms, but also to make ink, uh, filling material for, for all kinds of plastic materials. Uh, so it has, has uh, way more different uh, uh, applications. And also we see a lot of wood crates going into the wood recycling bin. Fantastic. Yeah? Uh, recycled wood gives uh, excellent um, uh, ply, plywood uh, material, but a wooden crate as, as such is already uh, worth way more than, than just uh, uh, the, the, the material wood to be recycled. So, and, and businesses do not always know this. And um, I think uh, also um, uh, the, the upcycling waste project from the Utrecht to Sees uh, is, is also uh, very happy to point this out so that people can actually uh, uh, earn, earn more uh, from, from what they see or what they call as waste, which is really not. Next slide, please. So, ah, yeah, here we see a nice picture of mushrooms growing on, on, on coffee husks. So nowadays, a big business in the Netherlands. Uh, also in the Netherlands, uh, uh, we uh, separately collect orange to, to, to um, uh, produce odor for cleaning fluids. And also nowadays, uh, other different types of vegetable peels, which are clean, so they, they fall under the, the, the quality guidelines of good manufacturing practice, GMP, can be used as insect fodder, and that can be again used as protein fish fodder. Uh, P.S. We see a few question marks here in boxes, so the, the system is should be arrow, so the system uh, does not really put this into to the arrow. So, so uh, 
Yeah. My fail. My fail. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks, Martin. Uh, so, so, but um, uh, and if you make protein for fish fodder, then actually you can you can have um, uh, a meat production uh, or fish production based on on a, a vegetable diet. So that's quite that's quite interesting. And else. What I also already pointed out is that wooden crates and also pellets, also the so-called the one-way pellets that are being made not to, to, to turn back, but just to, to discard off. The, also, these things are, are very valuable and worth money. And of course, also your bucket, but also your cardboard boxes. If you can return them into your um, a supply chain, or if you, there's always a trader um, in the neighborhood, at least in the Netherlands. So, um, they can, they can, you, you can actually, uh, yeah, um, earn more from, from your, uh, from your so-called waste. And this is, I think, the major question is, is how can we stop the spillage, not only in material and of course in environmental impact, but also simply in, 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 in pounds, in pound sterling. Eh? Uh, a lot of stuff is going out of our, our businesses that's actually worth money. And that's, that's I think, it's a pity. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've got a repeated. Uh, also, so uh, Martin, did you want Philippa to say a few words while yeah, I find please. the right sides? Yeah, Philippa, if you wouldn't mind just saying a, a few words. Uh, Philippa is from Binet, who are the, the uh, uh, contractors, consultants who've been helping us uh, do the audits and pulling the business case together. But Philippa has seen some really uh, interesting examples of upcycling around the world that we thought would be interesting to share with you. So Philippa, over to you. Thank you. Um, so it's been fantastic to go out and meet the businesses in Norwich. The team have been out and we've been working with students from the university as well, doing the audits. And as everyone said, we've spoken to over 200 businesses already. Um, we're doing the final push next week to get the, the last few numbers in. And as has been shown in the slides before, there's an awful lot of what you'd expect out there, but that doesn't mean that it can't be interesting. Um, there's an awful lot of cardboard there at the moment, but there is a fantastic product that you've probably all seen, the Eco Helmet, a bicycle helmet that's foldable and entirely recyclable that can be made, that is made from fiber, so from paper and from used cardboard. And there are lots of exciting businesses in the area already. So a lot of you probably know Coral Eyewear that's making sunglasses from recycled fishing nets and recycled plastics. There's a number of companies out there now that are taking discarded ocean plastic waste and turning it into something incredibly interesting and different. So taking things that were previously a problem and turning them into an exciting product. Um, I'm waiting for the delivery of my new litter pickers that are actually made from single use face masks and they're being um, collected again from litter on the street processed down in Cornwall at the Royal Cornwall Hospital and turned into litter pickers. So a fantastic circular example there. We ran some workshops on this with some of our European partners and some of the things that people were talking about were actually super simple as well. So somebody came up with the idea of hard hats and what you do with hard hats. And, and one of the, the ideas that somebody came up with was actually, can you reuse them and turn them into hanging baskets? You know, something that's really, really simple. And strangely today, I've had a query from a rather large contractor about what we can do. Are there any good ideas about what we can do with their hard hats at the moment? In the past, um, we've distributed these out to children's nurseries for kids to use so they can dress up and be builders. Um, but there's a limited number of nurseries out there you can get these things to. But the answers and some of the solutions can be really simple. I think the thing that's going to be really exciting about this event is that we have a huge amount of knowledge about the materials that are out there and which businesses they're in at the moment. We're going to bring some of these materials physically along. We're going to bring our knowledge and experience. We want you to bring enthusiasm and good ideas. There'll be stuff there for you to feel and play with and really get an opportunity to explore what's practical. While we've been doing some of these audits we've been um, doing little bits of matchmaking as we've gone along so for example there's um, a company Bowhill and Elliot that make shoes you know the hand making shoes and slippers in the city and we found a company that's doing upcycling of fabrics and um, quite high-end fashion items and we can match make some of those materials there so there are things that are in really small quantities which you could come up with something really quite niche, but high end. And then there's things like vast quantities of cardboard because we're all buying everything online at the moment. 
Um, so if you can come up with a good idea for what to do with all those cardboard boxes, there's absolutely shed loads of it around. So it doesn't matter how kind of simple or complicated the idea, how sort of design led or actually how creative the idea is just to kind of mess around with these things and see what's actually possible. And if we can help support a new product or a new business in the city while we're doing this, then frankly, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Thanks, Philippa. That's got me even more excited. Awesome. Um, so, Hayley, how's this all going to work? Excellent. Thank you very much. So um, I equally am so excited that I was listening to Philip and thinking, oh, my God, we could do this. We could do this. Um, so I'm delighted to be uh, back and um, part of I think, the city this year and so nice to be able to see an event like this that's going to be um, going ahead. So I'm hoping that after hearing from um, a number of our experts there, um, our audience is equally as excited. Um, and I'm sure you're already starting to think about what it is um, you are going to be able to, to make. Um, now, you know, the, the key thing, I guess, that um, we have at the minute is that, you know, we're in a generation now that cares more about products and the and, or the planet you know and, and recycling etc than ever before so um you know I know that there's going to be lots of people you're going to be able to um to talk to and, and get sort of lots of different ideas um to, to build up but ultimately you're trying to kind of think about um three different um areas really so first things first it could be that you're looking for a new product so you're going to find a waste stream and actually make a product out of it um now I don't know if you can see um, behind me, but um, I am a huge shopper of a certain platform, um, Etsy, who have done a very good job of being able to um, create a marketplace where people can um, showcase um, examples of just that, where I've got records hanging on just old copper piping. Um, I've got I don't know if you can see here, but right next to me, I've got a whole bowl just for um, looking good of literally just corks out of, I haven't drunk all of those bottles of Prosecco, I promise you, I bought some of them. <laughs> um, but you know, loads of examples of um, a waste stream that you can just turn into a product. Um, or it may be that you look at actually taking materials. We've just had some great examples of that, um, but it was phenomenal a few years back, as John mentioned earlier, to be able to see um, a group of people that literally went out and spoke to all of these different hairdressers and got them um, you know, super excited about what they could actually do about the hair that you know people are um, just cutting away and throwing away every single day. And they created a concept to be able to actually create fabric out of that here um, or we, we talk about Etsy and you've certainly heard it here from, first from Martin earlier you could be creating the next tinder platform for waste how exciting is that to be able to um, be the founders um, of such a, a platform um, you know waste is something that is a chore for every single business to have to try and manage and if you can try and find a way that makes it really easy to be able to um, connect their waste streams to somebody else that actually um, you, you know is in need for that um you might have some businesses that have such a small amount of waste themselves it doesn't feel like it's any good for anybody but if you create a marketplace that means that 20 30 40 businesses can all um you know post their waste and suddenly it becomes something much bigger um that is going to be of interest to somebody um now you saw on the map earlier that there's just two cities um in the uk that are taking part in this um and so for norwich to be you know one of those it makes me feel really proud um but you know also really excited because you could be creating something that you're you using you know our city of Norwich to be able to um, kind of quantify um, that you know business idea and that business concept and then imagine being able to take that to the 68 cities across the UK you then look at that to be able to say well, hang on a second that's 10,000 cities on our planet um, that you know this business idea isn't necessarily just going to be a weekend that you're spending with us it could be something that could go on um, to, to be something so much um, bigger. So what does the two days um, look like? 
Now, it is, as John mentioned, going to be a little bit different to um, the Sink the City event for those of you that have been involved previously. Um, we are trying to cram um, more into two days, whereas we would usually have our Thursday night um, of doing our pitching and, um, and, and building our teams to then have your Friday and Saturday to be able to crack on with the building. Um, we've only got the Saturday and Sunday um, this year. So the run up is going to be um, re really important. So we'll be working hard um, for you to be able to help um, get the teams um, built and announced to make sure that everybody knows who they're going to be paired up with um, make sure that we can introduce you to your mentors as early as possible because they'll play a big part and I'll talk about that in a minute um, but of course we're in an era where we're so used to this you know I'm talking to you from my home um, to tonight you guys will be able to organize Zoom meetups so that you can just get to know each other a little bit more if you're new to each other um, um, if you've already got a team of people that are in mind that you want to work with, then brilliant, that's fine too. Um, you know, you can coordinate to be able to meet up um, earlier before the end, uh, event um, and get some of your initial planning um, down. We'll be sharing information with you um, and you'll be able to, of course, spend some time reading up on the waste data and any other um, useful resources that are out there. Please don't panic if you're like me and manic at the moment in terms of just trying to balance everything. If you don't have time to meet up beforehand, it's fine. Um, we'll make sure that we're there to, to help you from day one um, on that Saturday morning. So please don't feel as though you're going to um, lose out if you haven't got time to, to meet up beforehand. We'll, you know, we'll absolutely be on hand to catch you up. So the first day, um, it is a nice early start. So registration um, with us um, at eight o'clock and then kind of from there onward through the weekend, how much you give to the event um, is in, entirely up to, to you. Um, I would say the key thing is we will feed you. So you don't need to worry about that. Food is always really nice. Um, we'll make sure you're well replenished with drinks um, throughout as well. And the venue will be available um, for those of you that want to stay a bit later. Um, we see people just getting so engrossed in everything um, in the event. So you will be able to be there until 10 o'clock um, should you choose. And then we'll be back open again on the Sunday from eight o'clock. So please don't worry uh, about food and drink that will all be provided um, throughout the event. We have some great sponsors that help us with that, thankfully. Um, but it's all gearing up to that kind of um, 4.30 um, final presentations. Um, we'll talk about the, the pitch um, in a minute. Um, and then it's, um, um, being able to announce our winners at six o'clock then with dinner and a fun after party um, for the evening for those of you that want to stay for that. Hayley, if you mind me just saying yes, for, for the attendees you and also the mentors, you know, you have to be there for the full two days, particularly because you're part of a team and also there's prize money. And if your team wins that prize money, <coughs> you can distribute it amongst each other. So Everyone needs to be there by, by 9 a.m. through till dinner at least, but yeah. Excellent, thank you. And you know, that is a really key point. We've seen teams that get quite deflated when there's um, members in the team that, you know, you've got um, one group of people that are absolutely giving their heart and soul into it. And then there's some members of the team that perhaps are not um, as, um, dedicated in that respect and you know and they miss so much there's so many conversations that I have that you miss a couple of hours of that, of that and you do kind of miss um miss quite a bit um so the process um now on the left hand side here a lovely smooth arrow the you know, ideal scenario is that you will um sit down you'll have your ideas um you'll do a bit of exploration um, the fact that we are slap bang in the middle of the city center means that you are surrounded by businesses that will have waste as a problem and will absolutely potentially have um you know some of the the answers to the, the, the product that you want to create so you know we definitely will encourage you to get out and speak to um to businesses and um, do that research. Um, we'll spend time with you taking you through a business model canvas. So for those of you that perhaps um, are a bit daunted by the fact that you're going to be creating um, a business, please don't be, um, you know, the, the mentors and a number of other people be around to, to be able to really help your thought process around what do you even think about when you're creating a business. Um, and then it's that kind of validation of that. You've got your idea, you've structured it out. Um, you know, how do you then validate and build on that further? Um, 
Now, the next part is kind of the actual bringing it to life. Now, as much as it's not necessarily a tech product this year, whereas previous years it's been kind of heavily focused on a tech product, you know, you, you think about the scale of what you could potentially go out to. You know, if you're going to be thinking big and, you know, that you're going to create something that could go out to 10,000 cities in our planet, you're going to need technology to be able to help you do that. Um, you know, and you're going to need to really think about what that design looks like and, you know, how you're going to be able to um, kind of take that design to, to market. Um, and then it's about fixing your story. And um, this is definitely my favourite part of Sync the City, which is the pitches. Um, and, you know, it's not very long um, to be able to think about how you can um, pitch your idea to the judges. Um, I think to the person that does the pitch, that kind of you know, couple of minutes probably feels like the longest time um, of the whole event. But it's amazing to see how, you know, brilliantly the different teams do really bring um, their business idea to life. And again, you know, the, the mentors will be be there to really help you with that. And then it's over to you for your five minute pitch to the judges um, to see sort of that winning pitch. John, you missed Tom's joke bit there. Go back a minute. <laughs> So this is not just some random swiggle um, that John decided to create. He didn't get bored and doodle, I promise you. So the left hand is this lovely smooth plan. The reality is you'll probably go all over the place. Like every business, um, you know, does set out the year with a, an amazing plan. And there will always be things that are thrown in the way that means that you'll pivot, you'll change your ideas, you'll kind of go a bit all over the place. But that is definitely the, the fun of getting to that five minute pitch. OK, so um, the judges, now you'll see we've got some blank faces um, on there. Please don't panic. We're working um, on a, a number of um, prospective judges to make sure that we've got some real key um, influences uh, across the city um, that can come and take part of that judging um, panel. So. Um, by the time that the event is here, um, we will have our full suite of judges um, there that you'll be pitching to. Um, now, don't worry too much at this stage in terms of the judging criteria. Um, you know, the presentation will be shared with you and you'll be able to see this. But the mentors um, and, you know, all of us involved in the event will really help you um, kind of stay focused on the, the judging criteria and kind of try and keep you on, on track in line with that. Um, and so nicely moving on to the mentors that we have um, with you this year. So. Um, as I mentioned on the previous slide, um, when we announce the teams, we'll introduce you to your mentor so that you can get to know um, them and, you know, that they'll then um, really kind of work alongside you and they do become a bit of an extension of your team almost. Um, and I think this is a chance for you to really use this as an opportunity to kind of learn and develop as well um, you know the mentors will provide a lot of coaching that you know won't just help you through the weekend it will you know really help you probably take into your kind of day-to-day -day, um, working life or you know uni life or whatever it is that um, you're working through at the moment um, and this is where we've seen some great success too in terms of it gives people like me who manage teams um, and you know work in the, the tech industry an opportunity to be able able to see your skills showcased. I've offered two people um, jobs from Sync the City of previous years um, because I've just been so blown away by, um, you know, how um, amazingly those people have done through that weekend. Um, so for those of you that are looking at kind of broadening your network, um, the mentors are a really great resource for you that, you know, I'm sure that you will continue to stay in touch with them kind of long past the event. Also, if you don't mind me saying, Hayley, yeah, you, we normally we have double that amount of mentors. Something I actually forgot to mention is the event's going to be half the size of what it normally is. So normally we have about 12 teams, you know, so it's normally about 120, 130 people. This year we go because of uh, COVID and space and everything, it, um, although the tent is huge, we're going for around 60 people. Uh, yeah, so smaller amount. Cool. And I think the, the great thing for this year as well is that because we have got such a um, kind of focus, you know, that we haven't necessarily had this year, you know, in previous years, sorry, you've just heard, um, you, you know, from a number of um, experts that, you know, whether that's Jan Henk or um, Gerko, you know, um, in terms of explaining the, the, the huge amounts of work that they've already put in. And the brilliant news for us is that they will be on hand um, throughout the weekend 
to be able to help kind of bring the research to life and be able to ask answer questions and things so to have that resource at your fingertips is going to be amazing we've also got Nigel Hargreaves who's the director of Simfo um, who will be available um, I think he's actually on the call I've seen his name pop up with um, questions but um, Nigel will be available um, over the weekend as well so I think he's going to be pretty busy um, in terms of people being able to lean on him for, for his help and support um, and you know there'll be a number of other people that will be coming in and out over and above um, the mentors um, the mentors are really good at kind of helping to introduce you to the different people that could help kind of bring your ideas to life so you're certainly not going to be on your own through that weekend. Ellie if I could interrupt just for a second to say that <clears throat> Philippa um, uh, will certainly be there but we're not sure about Rojo and uh, Jan Henk because of uh, European travel so uh, but, but oh no I thought on the phone I did um okay. you know on the phone yeah I wasn't okay. expecting them to be there in person don't worry guys okay. <laughs> but, but, Boris but, Johnson but, might have something to say about that <laughs> So, um, so yeah, brilliant. But uh, you've all heard from Philippa, and I'm sure that um, she'll be a, a fantastic support to everybody. So, the all important piece around prizes. Um, so, the you know biggest prize I think is definitely the um, bit here in terms of you know the things that you'll learn, the friends and contacts that you'll make, and just the contribution that you potentially are going to be um, making in that sense is going to be phenomenal. Um, but as a huge bonus, there's also three thousand pounds for the judges' winner and a thousand pounds for the people's choice. Um, so a really good opportunity for your team to be able to get that cash, and as John said, that's your your team cash for you to be able to do um, as you choose and distribute um, amongst you so some fantastic prizes there um, and I think the next bit is really important at the moment I'm sure if any of you are like me and the team that I work with um, you know it's a bit scary thinking about the fact that we're going to be having um, a face-to-face -face event you know we've all had over a year of um, you know working from home and um, studying from home a very different um, environment um, please don't worry as John said the numbers have significantly been reduced in a huge space so for starters the, the circus tent ultimately is outside you know there's going to be lots and lots of air that will be flowing hopefully we'll have some lovely weather um, as well um, to, to share on the day um, but we'll have on-site security um, with badge based access it will only be people that um, are part of the event that will be allowed in and to, to, to be part of it um, we will have a real clear code of conduct don't forget a lot of us are running businesses at the moment that are you know really focused on keeping our staff safe and so therefore that will absolutely flow into this you know it will be our job to be able to make sure that we do um, keep you safe and if the you know government do still have a few rules in place um, after the next announcement then we'll make sure that we're absolutely able to um, you know to support that um, and keep kind of following that that guidance so you know you're certainly going to be in safe hands um, you know with a lot of people that have got years of experience to make sure that all you need to do is focus on you know really enjoying the event. So what are you waiting for? <laughs> I guess is the next bit. Go and get your tickets. Um, so the, the um, tickets are now live. So you know, please do go um, and get your you tickets. Go live in five minutes. I've got oh, John, come on, yeah. counting down. <laughs> we'll have a big alarm bells go off, guys, when they're actually live. But um, but yeah, so please do go um, and, and get your tickets. But spread the word as well. Um, so you know, if you've got people that you think God, they would love this, you know, they're really passionate about. Um, this subject then please please do share it I am sure all of you um, have got social media and you know would be able to share on social media um, the fact that you're you know going to be part of that event um, you know please do um, spread that word so that we know that we can um, get our teams to a really nice size um, if you do have people that you want to be in the team with um that's you know absolutely fine um you just need to make sure that when you get your ticket um you highlight who it is you'd like to be on the same team with and then when we do the team allocations we'll make sure that we keep you um together so that's it from me it's now we've done our hard work it's now over to you guys so over to the audience who has some questions so it's Tom here, Haley. I'll just jump in and say, obviously, we've had kind of a lively 
bunch of questions coming in via the chat, so I'll jump to those. It's not too late to either throw a hand up if you want to use that uh, function in Zoom or add it to the list as we go ahead. But shall I, shall I sort of circle back and look at some of the questions that we got as we went along? Um, the I think we've kind of got asked and answered, um, will the slides from today be shared? Um, John, are you happy to, to, to find a way of distributing them or sharing them? Yes, I'll fix the question marks that are from young Hank's slides, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> Uh, good. So we'll, we'll find a way of making those accessible or distributed. Um, Hugh, you don't, I think you asked a really good question, Hugh. Um, Broad is uh, speaking along the lines, is this a sort of tech challenge or is this a product, you know, sort of fabrication challenge? Um, again, uh, uh, probably there's some, something of the answer in what we've already covered, but it's, I think it's a bit of both. I think there's some exciting things afoot in the materials that we've got there. And it, uh, yeah, to, to Philippa's point, might give us really interesting product ideas, even quite simple things that could be marketable uh, you know, and turned into products. But I think what's exciting for all of the organizers about this event is that we're bringing, with Sync the City, we're bringing that tech sensibility to all of this. I think the sort of people that will get participating in the mentors will be quick to spot those opportunities where technology can bring efficiency, potentially in collection distribution, imagining platforms, imagining things that would take work or noise out of the system and allow uh, a kind of easier recycling to happen. Uh, John, I don't know if you want to add anything on that thought, because it, it, he, he raises that interesting question about what is this a tech competition or not? Yeah, well, I, I guess it depends to see how, what teams come up with, because it could and the, 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 the kind of attendees we have and the skills they have, you know, because it could be a, a physical product. Well, I mean, it, it, we're not, we don't have a maker space as such or any 3D printers. We could look if people are really asking uh, for that, but maybe, you know, you model things in 3D or, or, or something like that. But yeah, it's um, open to any kind of end result. I mean, it can also just be there's, you know, it's really focusing on the pitch as such and right. doing the research, making connections and, um, yeah, connecting different companies. Thanks. Hugh, you also had a second question, which was about focus. Is this just sort of about Norwich or is there an opportunity to sort of join the, the bigger sort of picture around um, upcycling as a function in procurement? Do you want to ask that question yourself, Hugh, if you want to come off? I just, and, and then I'll perhaps invite uh, Jan, Jan Hink maybe to answer. Yeah, I think it was it was um, Jan Hank in his presentation. He mentioned procurement, and it just struck me that is this that seemed to be a challenge. It was one of the um, areas that he wrote down, or he, he had on his slide. It was sort of activities, and it was one in bold. Um, and um, I just thought, is that a particular thing that the team behind this are looking at? Is it about is it about the people supplying the waste or the people buying the waste or the people using the waste? Um, uh, that Maybe that's too many questions in one. Yeah, yeah that's all the questions. <laughs> Anyone, either Yannick or anybody from the, from the bid or the organisation. Maybe I'll come in on that one because I actually, I highlighted that line because that's the stage of the process where we're at really. So yeah. we've done the initial research, we've done the, looked at, interviewed people on barriers and drivers, we've looked at. so this fits into that stage of the process. So I just wanted to illustrate that where we move on to next is, um, yeah, we are uh, want to work with uh, the, the teams that come forward because they're using the waste streams, but we have to find this way of putting the buyers and sellers in touch with each other really. So that's where we're at um, in time, if you like. Great, right, thank, thank you. Thanks, Martin. Yeah, thank you. And, and I think uh, here also that uh, Haley made the point that, you know, it, I think what we've got in this this information, the survey that's done, the quantification we've got, we've got this amazing sort of a head start almost in Norwich. We've got to look at some of the resources that are out there, information that other cities, you know, in the UK and wider don't have. So it, uh, we've got this brilliant opportunity to figure figure out if there's something in it. And then, you know, it, we, we, we'd love to see a, ideas and businesses that could scale nationally internationally 
Yeah, I mean, you, I also think, yeah, like to answer your question here, you can, teams can look at the whole supply chain from the producers of the waste to the consumers or turning it into value. You know, it's kind of quite open. I mean, the topic is upcycling, but you can look at the whole part of it or small part of it. Yeah. Great. I'll, I'll move on. Um, we got an asked and answered question about what is we, which is good. <laughs> That was useful. Um, yeah, I was thinking something about Europe. Uh, basically, yeah, sort of electronic you know, components and, and, and bits of electronic machinery. Um, the then uh, Both David and Stefan are asking a similar question. With, will this list of materials that we've got that Jan Hink shared, will that be available to people? So I think that, again, that's an, a, a question answered yes. And I think also in the run up, in this, in this sort of week before the event, we'll, we'll create if you want to you know data reports links that really let you sort of dig into this kind of area before you arrive in the tent on that Saturday. Um, there was a question from Nigel, Nigel Hargreaves, are you still on the line and it, it was again it was a it was a bit technical and I might ask you to ask the question yourself. It was a question about is this sort of about is product waste in scope? Do you want to sort of ask that question and yeah, I think it's, thanks, um, Tom, I think it's been answered already um, that uh, this is really strictly about upcycling and not actually reducing the waste from the source through design for repair. So I've got the answer. Thanks. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Tom Hachewski, uh, you asked a question about um, what, <laughs> hold on, what if the government you know, <laughs> boils our July by saying something horrible in June? John or anybody else from the organizing group, do you want to do you want to sort of pick up on that one? Well, I'm happy to come in on there. And uh, yes, there's a risk. And um, uh, what we will do is uh, we are keeping a very careful note on all government guidance, and I can reassure everybody we will follow it to the letter. Um, so we we might have to say, you know, on each day, bring your COVID test with you. Um, I don't know. Uh, but we, we, we will do absolutely what is necessary to, to keep people safe. And if that means uh, there is something so serious that we have to cancel it, we'd have to cancel it, or I would hope postpone it. So we won't be taking any risk with anybody's health. Yeah, all money. Yeah, if, if there was, if it was cancelled, obviously we return that. So that the, the, uh, we'd make good on that. But I think, <clears throat> yeah, our view is, we, we can sort of see the finish line. We're really hoping that we, we, no, nothing, no torpedo hits us next, I think it's next Monday, isn't it? Which would allow, which would make us have to rethink structurally or in terms of timing, but we'll stay on it. And obviously we'll watch that really closely, Tom. Do you want to just talk about the uh, the, 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 the um, joining fee or the, the money involved and the potential for refunds? Is that what you John, to talk about how the final yeah, so the, the tickets are for the yeah uh perfect well we've got two ticket types we've got the kind of non-student and the student ticket the student ticket is fully refundable um even if you attend the event basically you have to pay for the ticket and then if you attend the event there will be a registration on every morning um and proof of that you'll you'll be refunded your full ticket um uh, within a, a week um, and then for for uh, the professional tickets they're well, well non-students they're they're 50 pounds plus the booking fee and then again if the event was cancelled which uh, we hope it's not you, you will be refunded that and John this is a great moment to uh, jump in with a question we got from Lynn which was there is a student rate but is, is does that is that also a rate for un, unwaged people Tom, if I could, sorry, it's Julie Schofield here from UEA. I Hi. saw that. I saw that uh, question, and I think uh, we could follow the same model that we've got for student tickets. So, um, perhaps John, we could add that as a as a sort of ticket category uh, yeah. for on wage. So we could follow a similar model. Yeah, great. And uh, th thanks very much. And uh, and I would add that uh, yeah, well, a, a well a well nourished chap like me, a fifty quid price of admission ticket was more than paid for back in the fantastic food and booze that we were plied with during the event so it's cheap at the price people 
<laughs> um, I have got another one from Phil. Uh, Phil McSweeney was asking about how do you kind of put forward an idea um, if you've got if you're already kind of starting to the synapses are starting to go and you start to sort of see an opportunity. John, do you want to ask that answer that because it's a, something about the ticketing process? Yeah. So we do ask a big sink the city. Normally we're quite strict on this. We don't. We want people to come up with a fresh idea, pitch it on the day, and form a team. I on the day so we don't want pre-formed teams of pre-created ideas anyone working on it has to be done at the event but with this event because it's a theme based and a lot of the work's already been done yes if you do have an idea um please let us know i've added when you sign up and create a ticket there's we ask you a few questions and one of those boxes are you know if you have any uh, you know if you have an idea that you want to bring to it put it in there and then we'll consider that. So we actually may form a team around that. And then likewise, if there's particular people you really want to work with, um, you know, put their names in, we, we, we ask that question. We'll do our best. So it's not guaranteed that, like, if you've got an idea that will happen, or it's not guaranteed we'll be able to put the people, but we'll do our best to try and uh, accommodate your preferences. But again, you know, we've had people in the past that really wanted there you know came along and pitched their idea really wanted it to happen were disappointed it didn't get through the voting and then they went and joined the team and they come out absolutely enjoying the event so don't be disheartened if we can't uh, accommodate but i'm sure yeah, we'll, we'll do our best and i think i'd just add john that if um if you express that preference when you buy a ticket like i'm a particularly interested in a to certain waste stream let's say you know uh, wood Fine, note that, and we may follow up with you, or if you've got a specific idea, we, we might reach out to you and sort of just have a quick chat and find out what, what you're particularly interested in. And if we think it's sort of broad enough that you could, we could build a team to explore that with you, then we're really happy to, to, to support that in the setup. Um, the, there was another one from Erna, just because it's a great opportunity to say how brilliant John normally is about this. Uh, Erna asks, uh, we may not be able to join from Holland because of COVID, can we record the end presentations? I think this is pr normally a pretty straightforward yes. John, you're, you're good at getting, getting those pictures recorded and shared. Yeah, yeah we normally uh, yeah, record them, yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Super. Uh, then, let me have a look. Um, oh, uh, <laughs> a question, proxy question uh from a certain paul john we're in a circus tent in the middle of a public park in norwich what's the wi-fi and connectivity going to be like very good question yeah so um well actually martin will be able to handle that but um yeah we've been working on that and yeah martin you've yeah i've been in touch with a company that runs outdoor festivals across the uk and they have a special piece of kit that we're bringing in we've hired in for the weekend so it would be the same sort of thing as you would you would get at Glastonbury. Great, and and I, I'd also add that, that listen, we don't lock you up and throw away the key when you come into the tent. You know, if if you wanted to put a video together and you wanted to move big files, you know, it's easy for teams to shuffle off and get to yeah you know, super fast broadband that they have access to and, and do their work and then and then come back. So if you like, we'll we'll find a way of uh, of getting over any connectivity problem that a team has. Yeah, and also recommend just as a backup your own if you can hotspot on your phone just to back up so it's good just to cover all bases yeah i think oh there was another one from james james ford um stats suggest that 170 businesses out of 250 wanted to know more what was the sort of pushback so again it's jan henk if you're still there um yeah, it was like we didn't capture information out of every single business in in the city area. What, what what's your kind of view on why why that is? And so um, so what, why why the ten percent was wasn't really higher? Um, uh, I think we have to ask at the interviews. But what we saw in the Netherlands, so I joined the interviews. Um, uh, the students that did the interviews in the Netherlands uh, with Pelican and Haag. And we see that a lot of uh, in the Netherlands, and I think it's probably the same in the UK, is that 
um, the ten percent wasn't wasn't really uh, higher uh, because uh, there was also COVID stress, in, at least when we saw in the Netherlands. A lot of businesses are too busy doing things, so a lot of parcel services, etc., they are uh, working very hard. And also, of course, um, the the pubs, the restaurants, and everything in catering uh, did, had a very hard time and uh, were stressed in, in getting uh, people in. So. Uh, then again, also the the, the target uh, of 300 is already uh, almost being met. So, um, and then I think we think we have uh, with the 10%, we already have a good um, uh, view on what 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 is there. Uh, what is always difficult is that the people themselves, when you do these interviews, do not know actually know what kind of valuable stuff they have in their ways. So. Uh, we are just scratching the surface here. So we can do the interviews as much as we can, as good as we can, uh, but still then people um, uh, do not actually know uh, precisely what they have on all kinds of interesting and valuable stuff in their waste. And if so I can- you have to, We have to teach them a little bit. There because uh, Philippa led the team uh, from the UEA, uh, supported by her team that did the interviews. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it wasn't so much people pushing back actually as just talking to the wrong people. So, you know, you go into hospitality, you're probably not talking to the manager or the decision maker. It might just be a shift manager. Um, so it was less pushback and more that the person we talked to wasn't a decision maker. So couldn't say that they could be involved or not, or literally just the time thing. Um, so like Jan Hank said, you know, we, we started these, we got a brief flurry done, I think before the tears changed in December. Um, and then we gave everybody a week after we started unlocking for businesses to open up. But if there's customers in a shop or people wanting to be served, we, we let the people we were interviewing prioritize their customers. So it was probably just the time thing. We got very little negative response from anybody who took part in the audit. I think for everybody, they, there's an understanding that waste is either a cost or a bit of a problem or could be done better. And um, the fact that this is something that will support the local economy and is businesses helping each other went down really well. So I think there's an awful lot of support from that. Great, that, thanks. And I hope that gives you a, an answer, James. But uh, yes, I think we, well, we can be confident we've got a, re a really good and, and valid statistical mm. snapshot of kind of what's out there and what kind of quantities, proportions. And, and uh, you know, I think it's certainly a, a, a lot of really useful information to drive at for the weekend. Yeah. Um, the uh, so both Phil and it seems like Alina and Phil were asking us a, just a build question on that kind of if I've got a kind of particular idea or direction that I'm thinking of what, what if I bought a ticket and then and then something brilliant occurs to me John I think we should Hayley we should probably have to think about that but I, I think it's as simple as sort of you know direct messages get, get you know raise a hand and just say hey you know it's a week to go and I'm, I'm thinking about this could be a focus and you know, we, we could have an exchange on email or just chat it through and, and see if we can support it. Yep, way more open. The rules are way more flexible this time compared to normal sync city. So we're open, yeah, for, for that, yeah. Great. Uh, Kate, uh, oh, thank you, Kate. <laughs> yes, I had not spotted your question, so I'll just read it straight out. Does the proposal have to make use of the waste streams identified in the existing research, or can it be more general? That, that is a good question. Uh, does anybody want to pick that one up? Martin? Um, I'd just jump in and say that there's lots of waste streams that we might not have identified. So if you know something locally that we didn't pick up in the audits and we haven't spoken to that business, then brilliant. Crack on. Great. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and are there any companies that Mark had asked that question about any companies that already expressed a sort of commitment to working alongside a winning team? Well, I think we probably identified there are businesses that are motivated towards better use management of waste materials. Um, but I think that's also part of the challenge of the weekend is like get out there and find some people who we can work in partnership uh, with bring that back you know as evidence for the judges and and that that's a pretty compelling case that you've got you, you found something and, and there's something in it and after the event as i said in my presentation i don't want to name names but there are some you know some, some significant businesses in the city that have said they will be happy to work with uh, the the, uh, the best ideas and help them develop that whether that's in mentoring giving advice and i mentioned things like 
you know, uh, a desk to work from to start up a business or shelf space in a store. Um, so depending on the ideas that come forward, we'll do our very best to make those connections. And yes, a number of businesses have had so they would be looking to do that. Super. So with one eye on the clock, and it's a nice sunny evening and you, we should all let you go, unless there's any other questions uh, I've just seen one from you. I'll, we'll come to that. Any other questions? Shake down now. I'll we'll just shout question in the uh, in the chat, and I'll pick it up. And also from uh, John Martin. Uh, any of the people who presented to us today? Any any other sort of final thoughts or conclusions you wanna you wanna share before we you kind of bring us home? So I'll leave that there for a second. But yeah, to Hugh's question, is there some sort of forum that we can gather on before the event to sort of ask questions, exchange sort of thoughts, ideas? Uh, it's a great provocation, Hugh. And again, I think we'll we'll think about that in the run-up. We're already talking about kind of getting us up to racing speed in that week before the event. We might draw that that a bit yeah, forward and, and allow people to start exchanging. Yeah, we could just like last time Slack, we've got a Sync Norwich Slack. Um, we could just invite people to that and then you can Fine. Yeah. Thank you, John. Well, so we'll we'll have a head scratch on that, Hugh. But it's a, it's a, I take the, I think we take the point. It's a good one. Good. Unless there's any other questions, then I think perhaps we just throw back to yeah. For any final thoughts, words, anything we've missed? I'd just like to thank the Sync the City team for being brilliant. Um, you know, when we we started talking to you six months ago. We didn't know where we were going to get to. I'm absolutely delighted with the uh, the progress we've made. I'm so looking forward to it. And just for tonight, I want to thank Jan Hank and Erko uh, because it's it's 20 past eight there, so they're waiting for their supper and, and Philippa, of course. So, yeah, we really think we've got something special here. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. So thanks everyone. Tickets are selling. We sold ten already. So I would get stuck in there and. Uh, Yes, see you guys in the tent in Chapelfield. Fantastic. Yes, bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.